Now, as most of you may be aware, Ford Falcons are one of the most popular cars on our roads and especially in the modified community. I love my Ford Falcons. I've owned two of them. I still own one of them. This is my 95 EFXR6. For any new viewers, I'm doing a turbo build on. If you want to keep your sanity and you don't want to do a build like this, I'm going to give you five of the best mods you can do to your Falcon without breaking the bank. For anyone that's new to my channel, this is my 1995 EF XR6. It's a massive work in progress. It's got a Intec out of an AU Falcon. It's also got the subframe out of an AU Falcon. And it's also got a lock kit. It's been turbocharged. Gonna be running a Haltech ECU. So when this car was NA, I had heaps of fun with it, putting cheap little mods on it to make it a little bit more fun than it already was. Now the first thing I would have done if I got this car stock would have been lowering it. When they have stock suspension, they're super comfy. They're like land yachts, but if you're buying a car to modify it, obviously you want it to be a little bit more sporty. And these Falcons, regardless of if it's a BA, BF, FG, even like X series, E series, they have a lot of potential when it comes to handling and actually making the car feel more planted on the road. Regardless of if you have a independent rear suspension setup, I don't know why I'm pointing independent. This has a solid rear end. They still handle really well. They're I believe they're a watts link. So they're, they're a more modern style of solid rear suspension. When you lower them, they make the car feel more planted. They make it feel, they make them feel more responsive. Almost every single modern day Falcon built after the year 1985. They have double wishbone front suspension. So when you lower them, they feel really good. I always go on about this, but the turn in on double wishbone front suspension cars always feel better than for instance a McPherson strut vehicle like this thing over here. Now another reason why you should lower your car or even just upgrade the suspension to coilovers or even lowering springs with new shocks is that these cars are getting on a bit in age. This thing is from 1995 which makes it which makes this thing almost 30 years old, 28 to be exact. I haven't upgraded anything in the suspension. The front shocks are blown, the rear shocks are blown as well. It's sitting on bump stops, it's that low on the rear. It's time for me to upgrade the suspension on this as well. But a lot of these, even newer Falcons, for instance, FGs, because they do a lot of Ks, they all have blown shocks. They're not expensive. You can pick up some lowering springs and shortened shocks from your nearest Repco Autobahn or super cheap even, or just order them online. Like for instance, King Springs, KYB shocks, anything like that. They're all pretty inexpensive. It'll dramatically improve the way the car drives. Now, if we're talking about cheap mods, this is going to be on a very, very high end of cheap modifications. These sorts of cars are getting really expensive these days. You wanna start getting into things that are a little bit cheaper, but offer the same amount of fun. For instance, something like this. The next thing you should do to your cheap Falcon is manual swap it. I bought this thing as a factory automatic, which was converted to a manual, but the T5 five-speed gearbox that was in it was blown and so I had to buy another gearbox which was about a thousand dollars and I chucked it in. If you're doing a manual swap from scratch on one of these cars or even an AU, it's gonna cost you between 1500 and two grand. Two grand on the very, very high end. It's definitely worth it. It's even gonna increase the car's resale value if you decide to get rid of it down the line because manual Falcons are much more desirable whether they're factory manual or manual converted than just your standard auto because there are so many of them. Now, because these things are such good dailies, obviously an automatic would be preferable for a daily car. But if you're a little bit of a purist like myself, you want something that's a little bit more involving even on your daily commute. So it's a no brainer. Put a manual in your car. It makes a boring commute more fun. That's why I end up driving this thing a lot. And if you're just getting into the modified scene, I doubt you'll be buying one of these cars to just hard park it at a car park. You'll want to be, you know, skidding it around roundabouts in Mexico or taking it to drift events or taking it to the track or even the drag strip. And having a manual car will teach you ways of controlling the car, which an automatic car wouldn't be able to do for you. Not only is it fun, but it'll also develop your skills as a driver as well. Well. Now when these cars are standard, in the case of this thing, this came with a single overhead cam, six cylinder engine, which we all know is called a SOC. In later Falcons such as AUs, they came with this thing called an Intec. 
which I've swapped in. From the factory, they're pretty quiet, and when the exhausts do start to rust out, which is very common, they start they sound like shit. And it's really a shame because you can really make these things sound pretty good. Now, the first thing I'd do is I'd go on eBay and I'd buy those $250 catback exhaust systems. It's a very, very easy way to transform the whole experience of the car from just a boring old taxi to a, a relatively exciting sports saloon. Falcon exhaust systems are also notorious for being very, very restrictive as well. I know on especially B series and FG Falcons, they have a very, very restrictive exhaust system. The, the cheapest thing you can do on one of those is putting in a Venom high flow cat or any other high flow cat and deleting the center muffler. On these things, if you put an exhaust system on these cars, whether it's from X-Force, pacemaker, redback, it doesn't matter. You will gain a little bit of power and definitely response if it's a good quality exhaust system. Another mod you can do if your budget is a little bit bigger is put a set of extractors on these cars. When I first bought this thing, it had a set of pacemaker or 4499 extractors on it. Pacemakers you can pick up on Facebook Marketplace really cheap. I know I sold mine for about 150 bucks. If you're factoring in an eBay exhaust and a cheap set of extractors, you're looking at about five, 600 bucks. If you're buying a car like this, obviously you're not going to use it to take the pigs to market on a Sunday. You're going to want to drift it a little bit, you're going to want to skid it here and there. And the next mod I reckon you should do, depending on how big your budget is, is either spool or put an LSD in your Falcon. There are a select few Falcons that come with LSDs. For instance, some older E-Series, the Toe Packs, came with 323 LSDs. This thing came factory with a 345 LSD. BA, BFs and FGs, if you get the XR6 variant, with a manual, they will most likely come with an LSD as well. Factory Ford LSDs aren't the best. So depending on your budget, I would either weld the diff, spool the diff, or if you're really balling out, get a true track LSD. Now, depending on what you use the car for, a welded or a spool diff probably isn't going to be the best thing in the world. If you can put up with a little bit of chirping and squealing around corners, it's not the worst thing in the world. It's definitely a much more affordable way of making the car more driftable, I guess. Even if you use it for drag racing, it's much better than one of those crap factory LSDs. Also, if you own an IRS Falcon, for instance, a B series to FG, you have to drop the rear cradle to do the diff in those. And once it's out, it's a very, very good opportunity to do the diff bushes. Although it's pretty funny to sometimes chuck around an open diff Falcon to see if it locks up. Ultimately, it's not going to make you progress and develop as a driver. Even putting in a mini spool will help you with that, whether you're drifting it or you're dragging it. Now, the last thing I want to mention is ECU tuning. A lot of people overlook this because some people say, oh, it's too complicated, it's too expensive. If you own a car like this or you own an AU, you can get something called a J3 chip from TI Performance. It's a very rudimentary way of tuning your car yourself and you can get pre-programmed tunes depending on what kind of supporting mods you have installed on your car. So when I first got this car, it had a J3 chip in it. Now, unfortunately, the supporting mods that were done to this car weren't exactly calibrated to what was programmed on the J3. So it was preventing the car from running properly, but I did make a video about trying to tune it myself and it sort of worked like it made the car have like a really lumpy idle because it used to have a cam, but it's a very easy way to make a lot of power with your NA Falcon. Now, if you're lucky enough to get a BA or BF or FG, you'll be blessed with the PCM Tech. PCM Tech is a really advanced tuning software that was developed by a company to tune BA to FGX barras. And they have so many, so many features that you can unlock on the factory ECU. You can have multiple tunes, you can have you can have rolling anti-lag, you have launch control, you can have pops and bangs if you lean that way. And if you have the correct supporting mods, you can make 20 to 30 kilowatts more on a barra. And if your car is equipped with the beautiful ZF gearbox, you can also tune those and make them shift a lot more crisp, ultimately make your car faster in that way as well. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. There's more EF content coming, so stick around and I'll see you in the next one.